Raymond, are you going to help me do the Bible uh, review today? This is our kitten Kareem. Like cream, uh, sugar and cream. This is Kareem. Yellow cat, super sweet. Okay, I have this little foam board on my lap. That's what I use when I video sometimes. Right, Kareem? Because I usually have cats somewhere. <laughs> Actually, it's easier to study sometimes, too. All right. Today, we're going to talk about the Evidence Study Bible. I think you're going to really enjoy today. Look at this cat. She's just like, she's like sleeping. Um, and uh, I think you're going to enjoy this. So let's get right into it. Now, this was by, the commentary is Ray Comfort. And if you haven't seen his ministry, you will love and enjoy him. He's got YouTubes up and that type of thing. So this is in the... NKJV. All right, so I wrote my letter in the beginning. We'll talk about all that in a little bit. This is the Evidence Study Bible. So you've got your table of contents. You have a springboard for preaching and witnessing, in depth comments, God, Jesus Christ. Just all kinds of uh, points for open air preaching. So if you are a street preacher, that would be something you've to look into, or even if you're witnessing, you know. I, I was in sales for a long time. I'd say, hey, anybody you meet, every checkout person, everyone, you know, just have a little cross pin on, or, you know, say bless you, or um, there was a girl one time that uh, I led to Christ at the, not actually letters of Christ, I should say. I talked about salvation to her and I told her how to get saved. And she said she was going to do it that day. So, you know, hey, you don't use every opportunity, right? Okay, this shows you how to use this book. Preface to the New King James. I like, I'm a King James girl, but I do like that. The New King, King James, that's a good, you know, it's just updating the words. Why Christianity... Now, this is apologetics. And if you're not familiar with that, it's kind of like why you believe what you believe. If somebody wants to fuss with you, so to speak, about why you believe, you know, contend for the faith. You want to have the answers. And you yourself want to know why you believe. Um, so, and I'll share this too because I think this might be of interest to you. Um, I went to different churches, did different studies through the years. And... Um, I know one time they had a radio show and they said on the radio show, hey, call in, you know, let's prove, prove to me there's a God. Well, anyway, the guy hammered questions at me back and forth and we were on there for a while and finally he said, you got me. So, because I, you know, he, I answered all the questions, you know, stuff like, uh, uh, I'll just give you a little example. Like, what, what, happened, what about the dinosaurs? Well, they were here. They walked with Adam and Eve. They became extinct. You know, and then the sun, moon, stars, and all that. It's like, you know, God created the world so that the sun wasn't so hot it didn't burn us up. That we have the right of food, amount of food to eat. You know, all that kind of stuff. That the, You know, so these are things that you should know. And with all the strange religions always coming out there, you know, you want... You want to be able to, you know, talk to people and let them see what's going on. Because, you know, the devil comes as an angel of light. I heard somebody say recently that all these near-death experiences, I'm not saying all of them because I don't really, you know, know about it. But, you know, Satan comes as an angel of light. And sometimes they say, I see the light. Well, might not have been God's light. <laughs> so that's something to think, you know, those are things to think about. You know, don't. there's lots of voices. And then who can tell me, I don't know, well, this is, uh, somebody else wrote an article, Genesis, I drew a little picture written by Moses, so I'm writing different notes and stuff in the Bible as I study as well. History of creation, then there's like lots of study notes, then there's like the regular Bible, of course, and little study notes on the bottom. He has whole articles and stuff. He seems like he has more articles in the New Testament than in the Old, but that's okay. So, but there's things, little notes at the bottom. You know, he's got different religions in there. You know, like articles on different religions. And why you wouldn't, you know, why he proves why they're not, um, 
you know, what the Bible says and why you wouldn't want to do those religions. He's got, I'm not exactly sure, little sayings by, looks like some of the presidents. And more articles, Roaring Waters. Um, how can people be happy in heaven knowing that their unsaved loved ones are suffering in hell? All kinds of co cool articles, like questions and things that many of us have wondered or asked or thought. Um, this is a scripture I'm going to go over in a little bit with you guys. Uh, C.S. Lewis. Jesus taught hatred by saying that a Christian can hate his father and mother. Um, the deity of Jesus. So you can see there's lots of little articles. Give yourself a lift. Colossians. Defending salvation through Christ alone. Sorry about the glare, guys. Sitting in my chair here. The Titanic. He's got all kinds of cool stuff in here. He also has another book out that I have somewhere. Talk about scientific facts. Um, it's like a little tiny thing. The Wordless Gospel. That's pretty cool, huh? And uh, One Year Bible Reading Plan. Commentary Index. So this is really helpful, and there's things that um, I know me and some of my sisters and brothers in the Lord, you know, I've, I've talked with people from different religions, different backgrounds, different questions through my life, I'm, so I know that, you know, things like this are important to know because you should know for yourself, and I, I personally suggest that if you are, uh, if any family should have this Bible, and the parents can teach their kids and, you know, that type of thing so that you guys aren't in, you know, ignorant. Because in the last days, you know, which I believe we're living the time right before Christ comes back, from my understanding, every single Bible thing has been fulfilled. Now it's just rolling downhill. <laughs> and we're just waiting for the Lord to return. But, you know, the Bible says, Occupy till I come. So, Let's, I'm going to start off here, and then I'm going to show you a couple things just to help you. Now, Matthew 24 is a big end-time prophecy that a lot of Christians use. Now, I just want to throw this out just to help you a little bit. And I'm still learning, so I claim nothing. Because <laughs> you've got to study the Word for yourself and know. And, but here's, from my understanding, it was written to the Jewish people. Okay, and in that light, some of the things that people have said in this chapter aren't exactly maybe what Jesus was saying. And uh, so, like example, um, I'll use to tell you this, like one was taken, one was left. Well, it was written to the Jewish people, and it looks from studying it out that one was taken to judgment and the other was left behind so what does that mean okay when jesus comes back the second time that one person went into the millennial reign the the ones that were already saved that accepted christ during the tribulation there will be some people that don't die during the tribulation and so they will go right into Millennial Kingdom, and the other ones will be taken into judgment, okay? Because they didn't, you know, want to live for Christ. Okay, so read Matthew 24. Do some study on that. You know, don't just take my word for it. Do some study on it. Okay, so here's what I wanted to talk to you about. The parable of the fig tree. Now, the fig tree is like a barometer of Israel. Some people say it's, it is Israel. Some people say the olive tree is Israel, but the fig tree is like the barometer. I am still studying this all out, okay? But it definitely has something to do with Israel. So now learn this parable from the fig tree. When the branch has already become tender and puts forth leaves, you know that summer is near. Okay, so when they became a nation, Okay, this is a big scripture. You're going to hear people talking about it. They, after 2,000 years, became a nation. I'm not sure exactly how many years, but it was thousands. I think it was like 2,000. 
they became a nation in uh, like a day, you know, like in 1948, they became a nation. Okay. So, okay. So then verse 33. So you also, when you see all these things, okay, we're talking about Matthew 24, know that it is near at the door. Assuredly, I say to you, now this is talking about the second coming. The first coming is the rapture. When all the born again Christians that are truly saved go to heaven, and how, and how do we know they're truly saved? Guess what? Something me and Bible study buddies have debated. We don't know. We and tares. We don't know if someone's saved or not. We think we know. We look for their fruit. Even if there's a little life in them, we don't throw them away. You know, someone's drowning. They got uh, still gasping for air. We don't throw them back in the water, so to speak. Feel they might be saved, but just barely. But, here we go. This generation will by no means pass away till all these things take place. Okay? Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will by no means pass away. So Israel became a nation in 1948. Those people that saw Israel become a nation in 1948, this includes the second coming. You can see how close we are, guys. If you do your math, those people won't pass away. That saw Israel become a nation till the second coming. So that just shows you how close we are. No other generation. You're going to hear me nag on this. Nah, nah, nah. <laughs> That you're talking about besides our generation meaning the people living right now have been able to say that we're ready for the lord to come back stuff like the genetics you know days like as in the days of noah you know the sons of god and the women producing giants which sounds so bizarre but now you see the genetics are all getting played with People are talking about aliens, which are basically demons. If you study it out and know your stuff, they are devils. There's no flying saucer thing from the air. Satan only has technology. And God has real life, you know, his throne and everything is living. The devil only has technology. And they live in the spiritual realm. But... We live in a physical realm, you know, it gets, it can sound kind of crazy, but hey, this is the reality that Jesus is coming back, okay? So anyway, got to study this out, and I want to encourage you to do some study on the end times. Don't be ignorant, don't be afraid, there's a blessing for those that read the book of Revelation. Of course, the devil don't want you to read that book, he wants you to be ignorant, because uh, he, he, he hates the book of Genesis, and he hates the book of Revelation, you know, it shows his doom. Okay, so, that'll give you something to think about today. <laughs> right? Look up, Google it. Watch YouTubes on it. The Prophecy Watchers. There's all kinds of stuff to watch about it. All right, now, here is the letter that I write in all my Bibles. And today I wrote a little different. And I just basically just kind of wrote, like, to the reader of this Bible. And then I basically will tell them... You know, and I'm, I changed it up this time, like Jesus is coming soon. If you read this before the rapture, you know, or after the rapture, encouraging people to, hey, come on board, make some Bibles and study material for people that missed the rapture or just in this day and age. So, um, and then I tell them how to get saved and I tell them about the mark of the beast and that type of thing. But every Bible that you own, you know, write a little letter in the front of it. If you decide to, you know, just keep it on your shelf after the rapture, people might find it, might get saved. And uh, also, too, um, you can write, like, little letters in your Bibles. You can uh, write um, notes. You can draw pictures. You can add your study notes. You can keep the Bibles you want, the ones that you don't, you know, you're done with, pass on. And that's pretty much what I do. I do my studies, and then when I'm done with a Bible, you can read your Bible in a month at two hours and 15 minutes a day and i'm encouraging everybody to get rid of this yearly bible thing 
unless you're working that's a whole different ball game if you're working your mother you have other things but if you're just playing on the internet or sitting all night and watching tv maybe you know the bible says redeem the time for the days are evil you need to pray about that that's where i'm at but i'm not saying that's where you should be at okay because you got to work out your own salvation with fear and trembling but you know jesus is coming soon now say if somebody said to you you have five years left to do all the work for the kingdom that you can before jesus comes back what would you change about your life you know and so you got to kind of say man i'm a soldier of the cross i'm going to do this until the lord comes back you got to pray about it don't get pressured and you're supposed to work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. And the other thing I say is it's easier to move a parked or a moving car than to move a parked car. Now, more on this too. Some of you may be led to make YouTube channels. You probably know more than someone else. You might, even if it's just Bible journaling and sharing a verse. Some of you may be felt led to make uh, tribulation Bibles like I'm doing, you know. I call all of us the tribulation missionary. No use saving food and all that for people that are going to be left behind because the trees are going to be gone, this will be gone. That That's... That's not going to happen. <laughs> they're not going to, they, you know, there'll be some people that God will reserve like he did Elijah, had the birds feed them and stuff like that. But, you know, unless God helps those people, they're not going to be able to survive with their own strength. I mean, imagine if you couldn't, right now, if they said, okay, you have absolutely no money. You couldn't pay your rent, couldn't pay your electric, your lights would be turned off. And on top of that, there's major catastrophes happening. You know, trees all being burned up, everybody dying around you, because like, and different things like that, diseases, pestilences, and then you have no money. <laughs> God's going to have to take care of those people. And uh, they're going to have all kinds of ways to find people and stuff like that. You know, so that, I mean, that's just, that's not really, you know, you're not going to beat the system, so to speak. Look at the pretty ribbons. So anyway, I just want to encourage you. I mean, I know Jesus is coming back soon. I'm really excited about it. But I also, you know, want everybody to make the bugle, right? So, uh, and hey, a lot of you guys are just prayer warriors. Have your, you know, start, you know, make it, put it in your prayer Bible. Pray for those people that are left behind. You know, we can kind of store up our prayers ahead of time and pray for those people and do little things like, you know, write it in your Bible and just say, hey, you know. And so that's something. Even It might seem small, but to someone else, it might be their whole world if they find your Bible. So I pray over my Bible. Who gets these Bibles? Who gets each Bible? And I work as much as I can and try to do what I can do. But I am led by what the Lord tells me to do. And I don't just decide what I'm going to do. I, You know, I, you have to have that prayer time, talk about the Lord. I have other uh tribulation missionaries praying with me and you know we we all have our own little thing that we feel god has called us to do so it's not a matter of doing this or that there's one guy i know that buys a bunch of bibles he doesn't do anything in them he just buys a bunch someone else writes letters and buys christian books for other people so you know you really just have to uh i don't know if she buys other books i know she does something with the books I don't want to, you know, tell a fib. <laughs> but she, so anyway, but everybody has to do what they feel led of the Lord. And I had to catch my breath there. <laughs> so, I'm getting thirsty. I was talking. So anyway, I hope that was a blessing to you. Again, this is the Evidence Study Bible. All you need to understand to defend your faith. Comments by Ray Comfort. And, um... I hope this was a blessing. This is not a real expensive Bible. I think it's less than $50. I think it's right around 30 It's on Amazon. You might be able to find it some other places, too. I know he's got a website and stuff. You can invite, look up Ray Comfort's website. So I hope this is a blessing. And remember, big or small, you too could be a backyard farm. God bless.